The movie starts in 1984, when flight JL-50 is taking off from Kolkata. However, halfway through the flight, they start experiencing heavy turbulence and bad weather. Suddenly, the communications are cut off, and the plane is lost without a trace. From that day on, not a single clue is found regarding the disappearance. The movie then cuts to 35 years later, in the year 2019. We are shown a remote village in West Bengal named Lava, where a bunch of kids are playing football. Suddenly, a large plane flies over them, which is very rare in a hilly area like theirs. The group immediately rushes in the direction of the plane and finds out that it has crashed into the nearby hills. The scene then shifts to Kolkata City, where the protagonist, Shantanu, is watching a news report on TV. The report the report mentions that a commercial airplane, Flight AO-26, which had several high-profile people on board, has gone missing. It is suspected that the plane has been hijacked. A while later, Shantanu heads to his workplace, the Central Bureau of Investigation. It turns out that he is a high-ranking officer there. He then goes to the crash site with his colleague, Garanga, and starts his investigation. At first, he approaches a rescue soldier and inquires about their progress. The soldier reveals that all but two people died in the crash, and the survivors are receiving medical attention. One of the survivors is the pilot, and the other one is a passenger. The strange thing is that a passenger's corpse is found in the cockpit, indicating that the plane was hijacked before it crashed. After the conversation, the three prepare to board a helicopter to visit the crash site, but just then, the soldier remembers something very important. He tells the CBI officers that the crashed plane is not the one they're looking for. In simple words, it is not Flight AO-26. It is, in fact, Flight JL-50 that disappeared 35 years ago. The movie then flashes to the past, to the year 1984, and we are introduced to an aspiring pilot from Kolkata, Bihu. She has everything one could ask for, a high-paying job, a loving family, and a bright future. However, for some reason, she is upset from the past few months. Her mother tells her to brighten up and forget the past, but Bihu simply ignores her and leaves. Back in the present, Bihu is fighting for her life in the hospital. She is none other than the pilot of the crashed flight, JL-50, which went missing missing in 1984. Meanwhile, Shantanu and Garanga travel to another remote village and visit a school. There, they summon the physics professor, Dr. Subroto Das, and start interrogating him. Shantanu reveals that the crashed plane, JL-50, had departed for its destination in 1984 and disappeared without a trace. He also tells the old man that one of the seats in the flight was vacant and the ticket belonged to none other than Das himself. For a brief moment, Das is visibly stunned, as this is some final destination shit. But he claims that he doesn't remember about the past as he has become old now. Dr. Doss then heads home and starts searching for something. A few moments later, he collects a bunch of documents, some pictures, and burns them all together. This implies that he knows something about the plane crash. Later, a news report reveals that a terrorist organization named the ABA has claimed responsibility for flight AO-26's hijacking and is demanding the release of their leader, Partho Majumdar, in exchange for the passenger's safety. Partho is scheduled to be executed executed in a few days. It is also reported that the officials will surrender to their demands. A few days later, Pilot Bihu regains consciousness, and Santanu heads over to interrogate her. First and foremost, he asks her how the plane crashed, and Bihu starts narrating everything. She reveals that, like any other day, the flight took off at 3 p.m. For the first 10 minutes, everything was fine, but suddenly, a passenger barged into the cockpit and stabbed the co-pilot to death. The in-flight meals must have been terrible. He then gave Bihu some coordinates and threatened her to alter the plane's route. But before she could comply, the weather deteriorated all of a sudden. This caused the plane to go through an intense session of turbulence, and soon, it crashed. After the story, Santanu asks Bihu the location and date of the flight's takeoff, and the latter replies, Kolkata, 1984. As expected, Shantanu doesn't believe her words and calls her a liar. He then mentions that they're in 2019, and hearing this, Bihu is taken aback. To find out more about her, the CBI officers reach Bihu's old house and interrogate some of the neighbors nearby. Since the incident happened 35 years ago, not many people know her. But fortunately, they come across a couple who were close to Bihu's family. The husband reveals that Bihu was a skilled pilot, but her career started going downhill when she got into a relationship with a man. He made her pregnant before marriage and passed away mysteriously. However, Bihu's breaking point came when her child was born dead. Soon, the husband takes out a photo album and shows a picture of Bihu right before she was killed in 1984. 
before. Lo and behold, she looks exactly like the Bihu in the hospital. Despite the evidence, Santanu, who doesn't believe in time travel, still thinks that everything is fabricated. Later, he heads back to the CBI base and listens to the black box recording of JL-50. As Bihu had mentioned previously, some hijackers entered the cockpit and killed the co-pilot. Then, after a while, everything went silent. Santanu asks his technician the last date the black box recorded anything, and the latter mentions August 23rd, 1984. This comes as a surprise to everyone, as a black box is virtually indestructible. Hence, they adamantly have to believe that the plane has somehow traveled through time to the year 2019. Meanwhile, the second survivor from the JL-50 flight crash, Mitra, has regained consciousness. When a nurse informs him that the crash has another survivor, Mitra immediately heads to Bihu's room to finish her off. Luckily, a nurse notices him and calls for help. However, instead of surrendering, the lunatic Mitra holds the nurse at knife point and emerges in the hospital's hallway. Santanu also arrives at the same time and tries to calm Mitra down, but the latter doesn't listen. Instead, he slowly approaches the main door, and when everyone is expecting it the least, he escapes. Santanu runs after the lunatic, but by the time he reaches downstairs, Mitra has already escaped in a car. Suspicious, Santanu then conducts research on him. He finds out that Mitra was a genius, who was a professor at the Kolkata Science Research Center. He was also a left-wing activist who was involved with some terrorist organizations 35 years ago. After finding Mitra's address, Santanu reaches his home. There, he finds a huge collection of books, files, and other research papers that Mitra had written in his lifetime. Santanu opens one of the files and comes across a research paper named Project A. When he flips over some pages, he also finds the blueprint of the JL-50 flight. Realizing that it is related to the plane crash, he decides to take the file with him. Later, in order to find out more about Mitra and his Project A, Santanu goes to the Kolkata Science Research Center and talks to a professor named Ashwini. As soon as Ashwini hears about the project, he starts giving a history lesson. He mentions that in 253 BC, the Emperor of India gathered scholars, scientists, and philosophers from all around the country to produce nine different books, which taught about several supernatural arts like invisibility, the ability to fly, and time travel. These books were then buried into the ground, fearing that the enemies might use it for their personal use. Several millennia later, some pages of the time travel book were found, and a team of researchers was put together to prove the theory. This top secret research program was labeled Project A, but no conclusion ever came from it. After hearing this story, Santanu inquires about Mitra, but Ashwini mentions that he doesn't know much about him. Instead, he suggests Santanu meet Dr. Das, claiming that the two were very close back then. At night, an enraged Santanu barges into Das's house and confronts him for lying earlier. He then brings out the Project A papers and tells Das to reveal everything. Left with no choice, the old man starts speaking. He says that Mitra's father was a part of Project A, but when they couldn't find any conclusion, the government pulled the plug on it. Years later, Mitra continued his father's research, and after working day and night, he finally found the code. Once again, Santanu doesn't believe in the story and calls it BS, but Das tells him that everything is true. He continues by saying that Mitra, using his genius mind, researched the incomplete Project A papers and found the formula, with the help of which, he discovered some wormholes in the Earth's atmosphere. Through these wormholes, time travel is possible. Das further mentions that he was Mitra's disciple at the time, so he knew the entire plan. Mitra wanted to hijack a plane, fly it through the wormhole, and reach another timeline. For this, he formed an alliance with Partho Majumber, who is the terrorist leader that caused plane AO-26 to be hijacked in the present time. At last, Das concludes by saying that he didn't board the flight because he became scared. He sensed that the experiment would go wrong, and so it did. Mitra had hoped to return back with the flight in 35 hours, but his calculations turned out to be wrong, and the plane vanished for 35 years. Getting math wrong in that way makes no sense. Surprisingly, even after all this explanation, Santanu refuses to believe a word, but Das reminds him that the officials have finally agreed to release the terrorist leader, Partho, from custody in two days. If he and Mitra reunite, they can use their knowledge and power to cause some serious damage to the country. I don't know though, Mitra seems like an idiot. This time, Santanu appears to be concerned, so Das tells him that there is a way to stop Mitra. He proposes that they enter the wormhole and go back in time to 1984, where they can stop JL-50 from being hijacked. If they succeed, there will be no deaths, and criminals like Partho and organizations like ABA will never exist. Although still hesitant, Santanu agrees. In the following scene, the duo heads to meet Bihu at the hospital, as she is the only one who knows the coordinates to the wormhole. Santanu requests her for the information, but Bihu, who is still shocked that she
she has traveled 35 years into the future, doesn't want to comply so easily. After a lot of convincing, she agrees, but only if she is permitted to fly the plane. Santanu clearly doesn't want to give in to her demands, but since this is a top secret mission, and since she is the only pilot anyway, he has no choice but to agree. The next morning, Garanga arranges an airplane secretly, and the trio sets off on their mission. Santanu still thinks that everything's a joke, but as they are about to reach the supposed wormhole, everything starts shaking. Suddenly, the plane malfunctions, and Bihu is forced to make an emergency landing in an open field. The area seems completely different from the one they just left. Soon, a vintage car arrives, and the three ask for a lift and get in. After a while, they reach Kolkata City, and Santanu finally realizes that they have actually arrived in 1984. The streets, buses, hotels, and the people, everything resembles the 80s. Although Santanu is taken aback by the weird situation, he decides to finish off what they came for. But at first, he wants to grow a mustache. I mean, he wants to get something off his chest. At night, he heads to an orphanage, and here, it is revealed that Santanu is an orphan who is dropped off at the same orphanage in the year 1984. He waits for a while, and suddenly two men arrive in a car and drop the baby inside. Santanu rushes inside to check if the baby is him from the past, and from a locket, he verifies his assumption. I suspended disbelief for the time travel thing, but the coincidence of this timing is absolutely ridiculous. The next morning, he joins Das and Bihu, and the three start discussing their next step. Das, who is a close confidant to Mitra in the past, reveals that the secret meeting on the JL-50 hijacking is going to take place this evening, in a warehouse outside town. Later, the group reaches the said place and waits for the perpetrators to arrive. While inside the car, Santanu curiously asks Bihu if she saw her stillborn child with her own eyes, but the latter has no answer for this. Bihu simply says that after the delivery, she became unconscious, and when she woke up the next day, her parents gave her the bad news that her baby was born dead. Meanwhile, Mitra, Partho, and other thugs arrive at the warehouse, and the meeting commences. Hence, the three make a plan. Das and Santani will be confronting the thugs inside, while Bihu will be waiting in the car. According to the plan, the two head inside and point their guns at Mitra and his men. But just then, the goons also strike back, initiating a deadly shootout. Fortunately, Santanu uses his superior combat skills and takes down the thugs one by one. In the end, he also takes down Partho, while Dr. Das kills his former mentor, Mitra. Now, with the mission accomplished, Santanu grabs the suitcase containing Project A papers and tries to burn it. But surprisingly, Das holds him at gunpoint and threatens for him to stand back. Here, it is revealed that everything was Das's plan all along. Since the original Project A papers were burned to ashes in the JL-50 crash, the exact coordinates for the time travel wormholes were lost. However, Das was not ready to give up so easily. So when Santanu approached him for interrogation, an idea struck his mind. He decided to use the CBI officer to travel back in time and steal the papers, with the help of which he could gain immortality. What? Das also reveals that the day Mitra escaped from the hospital, he arrived at his house. But instead of helping, Das killed him, hence removing a major obstacle from his path. With this revelation, the two shoot at each other, but Das comes off of it the worst, allowing Santanu to destroy the papers once and for all. He then proceeds to leave with Bihu, but suddenly, all three of them begin experiencing an excruciating, painful sound. It turns out that since Mitra and his men were killed, the plane JL-50 never got hijacked, and hence, the three never traveled to the past. Now, the timeline is rejecting unwanted anomalies, and hence, the three are all teleported back to the present. However, a small change in the past results in a completely different and alternate future. In the final scene, Santanu is shown traveling in AO-26 with his wife, and their plane is not hijacked. In fact, both flight AO-26 and JL-50 were never hijacked, as the villains were killed back in 1984. Santanu and Garango even run into each other in the plane, but do not recognize each other. This means that the two never became friends in this alternate reality, and probably Shantanu did not even get to join the CBI as an officer. Santanu then arrives at the same orphanage to celebrate his birthday. As he is playing with the kids, an old Bihu approaches him and hugs him tightly. In a shocking turn of events, it is revealed that Bihu's son was not born dead after all. In fact, the child was dropped to the orphanage by Bihu's father, as it was born before Bihu was married, and he feared that the society wouldn't accept her. The child is none other than Santanu. Tanu himself. However, in the new timeline, after the JL-50 flight returned safely, Bihu's mother eventually told her the truth, and that's how the mother-son duo were reunited. Now, in this timeline, the two have never been apart. The movie ends as Santanu and his mother distribute presents to the orphan kids and play with them, as both are empathetic, happy, and grateful for their new lives.
Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.